Welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today, guys, as we are going to be taking a much closer look at El Clasico. It was a huge win for Barca last night at the Bernabeu against Real Madrid. All hope appeared to be lost before the game, but this team right here, they stood firm and they delivered for us fans. And I think what's really interesting about this win is how we played. The difference in our setup compared with what you usually see from a Barcelona team. And that is why there is so much to discuss today. We're going to be talking about what we can learn from this, the mental boost that this kind of performance Performance this kind of win can and will give us, along with looking at some of the heroic individual performances we saw from the team last night. It is all coming your way. It is happening right here, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Let's do this. Because let's kick off the proceedings, first of all, with the reaction of Real Madrid. Because as soon as the final whistle blew last night, it was deep into added time. There was five minutes added on, but we were well into the seventh by the time the game ended. But as soon as it was over, Real Madrid, it's safe to say... They weren't very happy. They did not enjoy this one bit because straight after the game, Thibaut Courtois came out. He said Barcelona won the match, but they didn't deserve it. He said we dominated the game. We conceded only an unlucky goal. Luka Modric as well was quick to say they only scored a lucky goal. That was all it was on the night. And even Carlo Angelotti, usually this is a man that's very diplomatic after games. He said Barcelona did not deserve to win. Win, that's obvious. And you know what's the most incredible thing about these words right here? What you're hearing right now from Real Madrid? How ironic are these quotes? Given that is exactly how I would describe so many of Real Madrid's big matches in the Champions League when they've been on their way to winning titles. That's what they've done. You are describing your own performances. And many of us Barcelona fans over these past few seasons, you know what? We've given you credit. We've actually said that Real Madrid, they don't have to play well. They don't have to play perfect football all of the time to get the job done. We have given Real Madrid praise for their mental strength. And I think what you're hearing right now, the frustration you're hearing from Real Madrid is, we played them at their own game. We gave them a taste of their own medicine and they don't like it. Because when you look at the way the game played out last night, guys, it's extraordinary. When you're looking at the stats here, you know what that feels like looking there at Real Madrid? No shot on target for them in the whole game. That's the first time in a home Real Madrid match that they haven't had a shot on target since 2010. You know what those stats look like? Playing ourselves. It is like looking in a mirror. How many times this season have we been in that same situation where we've dominated the ball, where we've been camped in the opposition's half at times, but actually creating, well, nothing, nothing at all. No shot on target. Can you think yesterday of any real clear-cut chances that Real Madrid had? You just can't, because they didn't have any. And that, of course it is. That's why they're frustrated. And you know something else? Real Madrid don't like facing Barca. Real Madrid as a team, in terms of playing a Clasico, in terms of playing their biggest rivals, they'd rather not. They would rather play other teams that were not Barca. And why do I say that? Because in Europe, in the Champions League again, we can say with near certainty that the sheer name of Real Madrid, it strikes fear into nearly every single other European team. We've seen it, even against some of the best teams with the best players who are in form and they're feeling confident going into the game. They come up against Real Madrid, though, in the Champions League. They go to pieces mentally. They can't crack it. But Barca, of all the people, of all the teams, it's us who can stand up to Real Madrid. It's actually Barca who are one of the very few that say, you know what? We can match you. We believe that we can beat you in whatever competition it may be, home, away, whatever form we're in at the time, we will always believe that we can get one over on Real. And you look at Chaffee's recent record since taking over there as the Barca coach, coming up against the experience of Carlo Angelotti, that is a phenomenal early record there. In El Clasico's Chaffee really starting to dominate the fixture, really flexing his muscles. And in this game... 
He did it a different way. And I think especially right now, given what we've just said there about Xavi's record against Real Madrid, there, given what we just said about Barca's attitude in that game, their mentality when facing a team like Real, the next step now, logically, it has to be for this team to transfer that kind of spirit, that kind of steely-eyed determination onto the European stage. We have shown we can do it in big games. We've shown right the way through the season in the league, we can do it consistently. We have shown in Classicos that we can handle the pressure, but now it's about also showing it in Europe. We know that we can do it. We know what we're capable of. we just got to break down now that European door. And I think games like this, performances like this, they are only going to help that mentality. Because I'm thinking here about Xavi, especially. He's somebody that we keep saying has to learn, has to continue to evolve as a coach. And I think what we actually saw from him yesterday to set up in the way that he did, that does show evolution. We wanted him to set up in the way that he did. We spoke about it before the game, but we didn't actually know if he would do it. We didn't know if he was open to change, to being flexible as a coach. But you know what? He did it. He was happy to adapt, to go against, basically, his principles last night, to give up control of the ball, to not press Real Madrid high all the time, to drop off and really sit deep in the field. He changed the way that he thought about the game, and he won. And that is a big, big lesson to himself. Because let me just make it absolutely clear, guys. I'm not saying that Barca should or will play like this every week. That is not the kind of football that we're accustomed to as Barcelona fans. It's not the kind of football, really, that we would often encourage. We will not do this on a regular basis. But I can assure you, there will be times like this one. When things are stacked up against you, you've got injuries not going for you. Your attack is limited. We didn't have the options there. Confidence was very, very low. We didn't feel like the favourites in this game. But if you still want to compete, if you still have to try and get the job done, you've got to find another way. And that is what we said about Xavi in this game. He had to come up with a plan. He had to think outside of the box to make sure that we got through this game. Whatever it took. And that's what he did. And that is what each and every one of his players delivered. Because if we do indeed now move on to talk a little bit in detail about some of those players. Because I feel last night, guys, it was very much a team display. A collective effort from everybody there pulling together in terms of effort. But I do have to hand out here a special mention to some individuals after last night. Let's start with Ronald Araujo. Because what I've got to say about him is he's got Vinicius's number. He can handle him. He can take care of him. There's no doubt about that. How many times now? This is no accident. In Classico upon Classico upon Classico, we move him out to the right back area, we put him at one versus one against Vinicius, and we say, go on then Ronald, take care of him. And he does. He shuts him down. This is an extremely dangerous player in Vinicius. He's got incredible qualities, growing every season. There is no denying his ability, but Araujo, he has absolutely got him in his pocket. And what about Arao's partner, Jules Kunde, last night? What an outstanding display from him at centre-back. We know this is the position that he wants to play in, and you can see why. He dealt with everything that came his way. He's strong, he's quick, and on the ball as well, when we were required to play out from the back, he has certainly got the calmness there in that area. I think throughout the game as well, you saw him shouting quite a lot last night. You saw him passing on instructions to the rest of the team, and that is also really, really good to see from him. But I've got to mention along. Too. I have to be very fair about this because when the news emerged before the game that Christensen wasn't going to make it, I think we all expected the worst. We were all not very confident in Marcus Alonso in a Classico at centre-back, but he did very well. He did everything that was asked of him. And I do think the game suited him by way of he didn't have so much space in behind him to cover. I think that certainly helps him out a lot. We're not seeing him exposed for pace then because we were deeper in the field. But he did really, really well, not only there in terms of tackles, interceptions, but I think also aerial battles. He really came out on top too. So big, big credit to Marcos Alonso, you've got to say. And then in midfield, I mean, Frankie de Jong, what do you say about him? How do you even sum up that performance last night? He was everywhere, absolutely everywhere. I'm not really talking about across the midfield. He helped out defensively. And the most important thing in a game like yesterday, when the pressure was on Barca, when we were looking, whenever we won the ball back, somebody help us out. Somebody take that pressure off us. You've got Frankie de Jong who can just move through the field. He can pick up the ball, run with it, get his head down. He's got the power. He's got the pace there to get you up the field and 
can really alleviate that pressure. And Frankie de Jong yesterday, he handled this game absolutely masterfully in that midfield there. So, so good he was. And Franck Kessie alongside him too. He deserves enormous credit, I feel, as well. Alongside Frankie, alongside Bussi, he didn't let them down. He did not look out of place in that midfield. And again, I feel this setup, this system, it really suited him well in this kind of game because he was also really helping us with our attack. We knew that we were limited in that area, but he was moving up, he was supporting whenever possible, getting into the box, and of course he was extremely unlucky. And so blocking his shot there accidentally, of course, as it looked certain to go in, and he would have deserved that goal. He had a huge hand, of course, in the first one, and he really did deserve that Classico moment, but nonetheless, wonderful, wonderful to see from Kessie. I'm really, really happy for him. And I could go on and on. I could certainly go through every single member of that Barcelona team yesterday and actually say something that they added to that performance. Every single player had a role, had their part to play. And that also comes from Xavi too. This felt for me like a game that we came into and everybody understood. Everybody knew what the plan was. And of course it makes it, to be honest, more simple. When your plan is to get back into shape, when you've got a certain system that you're going to set up with for the whole game, it makes it easier. And that is why at times when confidence is low, when you're having to scrap through games and really struggle with injuries, this can help you because it does protect the players in a way. They're all together. They're all as a collective. They could all work to help each other out if needed. And whatever it took last night, every single player got us through this game, helped us secure a big result in this first leg. And I've got to stress, guys, we're only halfway there. We've won this game. It's a brilliant win. It's an unlikely win at the Bernabeu, but we still have the return leg now in April at the camp now, and we will expect to have a full squad of players available. And I thought it was interesting yesterday from Angelotti. He said, don't worry, Barcelona won't defend like that at the camp now. We believe that we can make it through. They're not going to do that again. So let's wait and see exactly what's going to happen, what Xavi does by the time that game comes around, and whether we can see this job through. So please, guys, what I would really like to know in the comments down below today is what is your reaction now on that performance from Barcelona? Because it was very, very different. That was a clear contrast to what we'd usually see from a Xavi team. But I thought it was fascinating. I really did feel as though it was an education on the different ways you can adapt to certain scenarios. And we can certainly use this knowledge moving forward with the players that we have. So let me know there what you are feeling at the midway point of this Copa del Rey semi-final. I will see you, of course, tomorrow, guys, as we now start to build up to the big game of the weekend against Valencia. We've got to get back on track now in La Liga. I'll see you tomorrow for all of that build-up to come. Thank you indeed for watching here today, for all of your tremendous support. It means the world, and we keep on pushing. But until next time, guys, as always, Vizca, El Barca.